Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you what this tutorial is trying to achieve. So, um, here's my name going up in flames. And uh, this is all done with standard After Effects effects, nothing, no purchase plugins. So we're going to start with a new project, uh, 720 HD, 25 frames a second. I'm going to use 500 frames, about 20 seconds. While working, I'm going to set the resolution to half and the size to 50%. And just start by typing in my name. So we'll get that uh, typed in and centered and spread out nicely. So we're going to have to have a couple of copies of this uh, name. One to actually wipe the letters off the screen and the other one to generate the particles that make the flame. Um, so I'm going to start by making a wipe that's going to slice through the letters, which is going to actually generate the particles. I don't want it to be too straight because uh, I want to be able to make different letters burn at different times. So I'm making this uh, wobbly looking mask here. What we're going to do is we're going to animate this down through the letters. Um, by the way, what you're seeing is speeded up two times, so I'm not really quite as fast as you're seeing here. Uh, whenever I do a RAM preview, I'll mostly be showing that at actual speed, but uh, while we're watching the working process, it's at, it's at two times speed. So I'm just going to switch off the mask, make it set the mask to none, so I can actually see the shape and the letters behind, so I can judge where the mask is going to be over the letters as we start. So I'm going to first set the bottom, the end position of the mask, and adjust that, and then we'll set a couple of keyframes halfway through so that the letters burn at different speeds. So I'm selecting a few points in the mask here, I'm going to just adjust those up closer to the letters. I'm kind of making this up as I go along, so I'm a bit slow because I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. Okay, so that just about does that. I'm going to come halfway through and I'm just going to delay a few parts of the mask. Um, so certain parts of certain letters burn a little bit slower than others. Okay, so if we adjust this up like this, then uh, that would mean that the little tail of the G starts to burn before everything else does. If I delay the rest of the G a little bit, which probably will look quite nice. I'll move a few other points so that the two sides of the U don't burn at the same speed. We'll start the A burning a little bit later than the rest of the letters. So make another keyframe right about here. Just slow down the capital letter. And just adjust another keyframe just to make it a little bit variation across all the letters again. Okay, so we'll have a look at what this looks like with the mask switched on. So that's about actual speed, so it's going to take about 20 seconds. Actually, I think that one's still speeded up. So um, I'm actually not going to use this directly to make particles. What I want is that the particles have uh, different degrees of transparency. And to do that, I'm actually going to use those mask letters to generate a key for a noise layer. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm going to make a new layer, new solid layer, apply turbulent noise to that. I'm going to alternate click on the evolution setting so I can write an expression. 
uh, for evolution based on time, which is a good trick. It means that you can generate as much animating noise as you like. You just extend it to whatever length you like. You don't have to keep adding the keyframes. So I brought that one back into the composition. And what you're seeing here now is the noise masked uh, from the letter layer. So by using the um, track mat, the, the tracking mat, uh, to use the alpha of the layer above. I'm going to switch that back off again while we see what we're doing. Because there's actually a problem with this, which is that the layer uh, will be black and white but solid. And what I want is that all the particles are white with varying degrees of transparency. So I'm actually going to pre-compose uh, those layers and the pre-composed layers, I'm going to use those to generate an, a luminance key for yet another white layer. Uh, so it's quite a complicated process, but uh, it's, it's a good way of getting um, white particles with varying degrees of transparency generated from that, those sliced letters. So you probably, if you didn't catch all that, you might want to go back and pause the video and see, see exactly what's going on. Uh, what I've done now is I've duplicated uh, those wiped layers again. And this one, I've duplicated it so I get the um, letters revealing. This is actually going to just be used directly. So I've duplicated it and deleted out the white solid layer again and made my uh, main text layer visible again. It's not being used as a key. And I'm going to take the top row of mask points and move them down to the bottom of the screen. And what was the bottom row of mask points becomes the top. And as that animates down, um, it will match the position of the sliced letters. So, if you look in the um, project window, you'll see I now have one layer called Particle Generator, which is my sliced, uh, white, uh, noisy uh, slice through the letters. Uh, slice with noise is the pre-composed layer that was used as part of the Particle Generator layer. And now I'm working on this white letters uh, composition. to wipe the letters off the screen. It doesn't really matter that the bottom of that is wiggling. So now what you'll see is this is the wipe at actual speed. So it takes about just slightly less than 20 seconds to wipe off the screen. So above these letters is going to be where we generate our flames. So if I now Take this white letters layer, and what I'm going to do is just feather the top edge. Just move the top edge up very slightly so that it's going to overlap uh, where the noise is uh, for the particles to be generated. So there's not a gap between the particles and the wiping of the letters. So I make a new composition, and I start that by just dragging my white letters layer onto the new composition button. I'm going to add my particle generator composition into this. And what we'll see together there, and I'll just do a preview here, is you'll see the noisy wipe coming down just above the solid letters wiping off. So you can see the top part of the letters is right now showing that noisy white pattern and that's going to become the particle generation. So I make a new solid white layer. I'm going to add the particle playground effect to this and what you'll see at the start is that we have a cannon generating there. So I'm just going to open the cannon and set its 
particles per second to zero, so that switches that off. Instead, I'm going to add a, a particle explode and use my particle generator layer um, to generate those particles. So what I'm going to do now is, you'll see the the particles. If you if you try and run this, um, you'll find it generates way 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 too many particles because they're not dying. So once they fall off the bottom of the screen, they just carry on forever and ever and ever. And as each frame goes by, you get more and more particles. So I made a solid blue layer, and I pre-compose that for something we're going to do later, and I call that pre-composed layer particle modifier. I'm going to use this in the persistent property mapper. I'm going to use the it was a solid blue, so I'm going to use the blue to map to lifespan. And I think I've set it too short. I set it to half a second. And I've also changed my gravity so that it points upwards, so the direction of zero. And I changed the gravity strength down as well, so it doesn't pull quite so hard. But I think that the two things are too small quite uh, right now. So I set the lifespan maybe to one second, and I'll set the force of gravity maybe 100 and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's looking nice. That's about the height I want my flames to be on average. It's burning at a nice speed. Um, obviously it's too straight right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this particle modifier layer, and I'm using the blue um, but we've got three channels of color that we can use to modify different things. So I'm actually going to use a turbulent noise to apply some force in the x direction. So make a new white solid layer, add a turbulent noise to this. And uh, again, we use a time trick, alternate click on evolution. I'll set this quite fast, time times 1500. So the noise is going to be animating quite fast, so it's going to be making the flame wiggle left and right as it goes upwards. And I want this to be in only the red channel of this composition. So what we'll do is we'll add a tint to this noise layer and make the white tint to red. And so we can still see the blue solid through this. I'm going to change its transfer mode to add. So now you can see that the blue and the red are mixed. So the blue is still going to be giving me the same lifespan as it was before, but now I can add x-force to the red value. I'm going to set this to a negative value of minus 10 plus value of 10, and now we should see that the flames wiggle left and right as they burn. So the last thing I want to do to make the flames look uh, more natural is to actually also affect the height of the flames uh, with another layer of noise. So we've used red and we've used blue. We can add this um, noise into the green channel. And I do this just by duplicating the noise that we already had and renaming these as red noise and green noise so we can see which they are. And right now, because it's duplicated, the red and the green are in the same place. So we see white noise against blue. Um, but I'm going to change the speed of the green noise, make this slower. So the height wiggles at a slower rate. And I'm just going to use a transform to offset that noise. So if we look at just the green noise, this is what we've got. If we add all three layers together, we'll see solid blue and then the green and red all added together. So we map the Y force to the green channel. Use the same values, minus 10 and 10. So this will vary the height. So now you've got quite a nice flame effect. So now the last thing I want to do with this is I actually want to make these particles look a bit more like flames rather than just white dots moving up the screen. So I'm going to do a couple of things to achieve this. I'm going to blur them slightly. So on this particle layer I'm going to add a fast blur. And this takes a while because there's a lot of particles being generated. So I'm actually just cutting this a bit short 
it took longer than you'll see on the screen to do this. Um, and it's taking longer because I, I want to see this exactly how it's going to look. So I've set the scale back to 100% and the resolution back to full. So I blur this an amount of 5. I'm going to add a colorama effect over this. And again, it's going to take a while, so I'll cut it short a little bit. And initially we get this, which is not what we want, because it's keying off the intensity. If we change this to key from the alpha and tell it not to modify alpha under the modify settings, we'll get something much more like we, we want. I'm going to set this to be output cycle a ramp of gray. I'm going to just add some flame-like colors in the middle of this. And in order that we don't get this dark line at the bottom of the flame, instead of having this applied as an as a normal transfer over the top, I'm going to add it to the layers underneath. Of course, white plus anything is white. Uh, but where the flames are reaching above the letters, you'll see the true colors of the flames against the black. So just fiddle around with this colorama output a little bit more to get something I, I like. And then that's just about it. That's the whole tutorial done. So I'll do a RAM preview of this. So you're going to set the radius of the particles. At the moment is at 2. That will actually mean that they're 4 pixels big. If you want this to look really nice, then you set the radius of the particles down to 0.5, which will give you a, a 1 pixel size particle. Of course, it will take a lot longer to generate. And if you set the particle size smaller, maybe you set the blur smaller as well. So setting that to 2. You see very fine particles. This is the preview. It took a long time to generate the preview. This is what we get at the end. So you can fiddle around with this a little bit more to make these uh, even nicer. But that's the, that's the basics of it. I hope you enjoy the tutorial.